Greetings, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe, and welcome to episode 19 of 3D Universe Untethered. You know, we like to share stories through this series of the exciting things people are doing using digital fabrication technologies, things like 3D printers and laser cutters and vacuum formers. And today is a perfect opportunity to share a story like that. What happens when you take a traditional craftsman, somebody that actually has uh, more creativity than someone like I do, somebody that's been making things with his hands and with traditional tools for years, what happens when you give someone like that access to these tools, to these digital fabrication tools? Well, today we're going to get a chance to hear about that. And to learn more, I'd like to invite to join me Jen Owen and Bryce Carter. You guys want to join me on screen here? Welcome, guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good to have you with me. Yeah. So as I said, I really love to have the opportunity to share these stories um, of, of people that are doing really cool things with digital fabrication. And, and this one's a little bit unique because both of you have had an opportunity over this last uh, you know year, last months, to start to explore digital fabrication in a way that is is new, and, and in fact, what makes this interesting, we'll talk about this, is that that Jen, you know, you sort of learned this for yourself, and then turned around and, and was able to teach it to Bryce, who yeah. uh, was was able to to do some very cool things with it. We'll hear about today. So I'm going to embarrass you guys first, just for a moment, <laughs> if you don't mind. I'm going to let the audience know a bit more about you before we get into a discussion here. So Bryce mm -hmm. Carter is an old school punk heathen leather worker, jewelry maker. <laughs> woodworker and a guy who still makes patches for his jean jacket with an exacto knife, card stock, and can of spray paint. He has always loved creating things with his hands, especially Norse and Viking jewelry, as well as art carved from wood, bone, and antler. He sells these unique items in limited quantities through his Etsy store, Carter Craftwork, that is Carter Craftwork without the S folks, Carter Craftwork. You can find him on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook under that same name. So Carter Craftwork, no S, all one word. You can find him on those platforms. Jen Owen, who you may know from our other uh, episodes of 3D Universe Untethered or from our YouTube channel, uh, she's our creative director here at 3D Universe. But over the past year, as I mentioned, she's also been learning how to use her own 3D printer, laser cutter, and now a Make You Form Box desktop vacuum former. She loves to travel and take photos of everything. She has recently started her own YouTube channel called The Traveling Dork to document her road trip van life mm. adventures in her new converted minivan camper. We'll get to talk a little more about that today. She is enjoying being able to make fun things to take with her on her road trips, having breakfast with baby owls who crash her campsite, and dancing like a fool in the middle of the forest. Fun. Awesome. I'm so glad both of you could join me. This is going to be such a fun discussion. So again, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Bryce, I want to start with you. Tell us a little bit about what you do for a living. What's your day job currently and what have you been doing for, for these past years? All right. My uh, current day job, I work in the aerospace manufacturing industry. So I'm making um, like uh, aircraft interior parts. You know, I do like sidewalls, overhead bins, that sort of thing. Um, the nice thing is that in doing that the last several years, I've, it, um, I've been taught a lot of precision measurement uh, techniques, how to really, you know, tighten up the tolerances and make something very precise. And that's actually lent itself pretty well to what I do at home. Nice, nice. And uh, so now what's the, there's, you're kind of going through a, a transition period here. Tell us about what's going on. Oh yeah. Our, um, our facility is going out of business. We are closing down. I'll be laid off soon. Um, they have no longer, like they've moved a lot of our work to other sites, you know, California and a couple other places. So I will be ready to do something different very soon. Yeah, and this was this was something that was due to COVID primarily, right? The changes that yeah. happened in the shutdown. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that and, and sorry that you're going through that. On the other hand, I mean, if we can talk about a silver lining, you know, I'm very hopeful that you have the opportunity to, to, to get something going here that you're, you're working on this, this small business now and you have an Etsy shop going. How wonderful would it be if you're able to, to kind of turn this into a profitable business for yourself? And if the, these digital fabrication tools we're gonna talk about can help you do that, I, I, I just 
couldn't be happier. So um, I was just saying before this episode that I hope we're going to have a chance to follow up with you down the road and kind of hear more about how things are going and, and, and learn more. But tell us about the kinds of things you've done in terms of the, the way you've been doing things so far, the types of, of materials that you work with, some of the kinds of tools and techniques that you use to, to make the kinds of, of items that you produce. Okay, yeah. Um, for the majority of my jewelry that I make, you know, it's a lot of uh, bone and antler pendants, as has been uh, mentioned before. So I use um, various grinders, and like I, I have a Dremel. I've got a, I've got a uh, belt grinder. You know, I've got uh, like the wheel style grinder too. So, I mean, most of the time I had to just before I got access to these tools, it's been all manual. You know, I'd yeah. draw on the pen, draw on the bone of the pencil, and try and keep the line straight with the Dremel bit, try and etch something in there and hope it comes out so, well. <laughs> so not only carving the piece of bone, but you are actually etching the little lines and the actual designs onto the pieces by hand. Yes, yeah. that's and right. I, I don't know. I mean, there's people watching who know that I am um, roommate to Bryce and his family. And so me coming into their house um, during COVID, they opened it up and let me live here. And I'm working for 3D Universe and I've got, you know, laser cutters and 3D printers. And I'm like, I'm watching this man who has this amazing talent sit at the kitchen table, scratching a design into a piece of bone with a nail. Um, we need to get him a laser cutter. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I just don't want to keep our audience in too much suspense. So let me ask, do you have one of the pieces there that maybe was done by hand and maybe one that was done with a laser cutter that you could hold up so we could see kind of what those look like? I have only one in the garage. Yeah, I can get one that I did by hand. I can do it. Actually. I'm quick. Okay. Awesome. We'll, we'll talk while she runs and gets that. Right. So, so yeah, tell, I, I mentioned kind of that you've, you've got this Etsy shop going. Tell me a little bit more about your sort of the, the idea there and your, what your hopes are. I, I, I'm kind of going on the assumption here that this is the kind of activity that you would really enjoy doing if you could do this for a living, making these types of, uh, this type of artwork. Is that right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, that's exactly what I would like to be doing. Um, it all started basically with, um, you know, I got into carving wood several years ago, you know, like um, when I was unable to afford something I wanted or uh, yeah, couldn't yeah. find it. So I was like, I'll just make it myself, you know. I get and this is again knife. by hand, just using wood hand carving tools? Yeah, yeah. The, um, initially I was using an, um, an X-Acto knife and then okay. eventually, eventually I was given like actual wood cutting knives and it got easier and easier. And then um, later on the um, carving the bones though, that came along from just sort of, you know, I've always been fascinated with skeletons and bones. And I was thinking, you know, I was like, why am I not carving these? You know, I, I find them yeah. in places I have access. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So kind of turn into that. And, you know, I like the fact too, that I'm, I'm making things that I care about. So it's not like um, a lot of factory produced items or people are just, you know, they're in there for the, to get paid and they don't care and they throw it together. And yeah, yeah. that's that. But for me, every piece is something I'm, you know, I'm interested in. I, I drew it, I, I designed it, I took time. So I want to make them all as, you know, high quality as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, I couldn't find one. I can, actually. Oh, no worries. You can. No worries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will, uh, we'll be talking about Jen for a moment here, if you need a chance to, uh, okay. to, to break. sneak away for a moment. <laughs> Jen, right so, so Jen, you moved in with Bryce and his family back in, what was it, early 2020, right? Yeah, uh, I originally was going to go travel for six months to put everything I own into storage about a week and a half before we heard that COVID was a thing and was going to go live in Costa Rica for six months. And then I went, um, I have nowhere to live. And they're like, come live with us. Nice. We have an extra room. So I've been here for a lot longer than the two week lockdown. <laughs> surprise <laughs> but it, it turned out to be a good thing because um I'm, I'm really enjoying watching Bryce go from traditional to technical and it's it's worked out really cool 
Fantastic. So it was around that same time, a little background here for uh, our audience, you know, it was around early 2020 when uh, we got the bright idea that, you know, gosh, I'm, I'm so busy that I, I really haven't had the time to make some of the videos that I wanted to make for some of the, the products that we offer. And we started thinking, gosh, how fun would it be to put some of these in the hands of Jen, who's kind of a lot more uh, expressive, shall we say, than I am on video, and kind of capture her experience as somebody that's not familiar with these technologies, rather than me just kind of geeking out about them. And so we decided to send her, it was first a laser cutter, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I really didn't help you, right? I just kind of sent you the laser cutter and then let you figure it out and let you document your journey as you got started with that. And then we sent you an Ultimaker 3D printer and then more recently a Make You desktop vacuum former, right? So we're just right. kind of packing you in there. I hope you got a whole work, <laughs> workspace set up there. You're, you're going to yeah. need the room. We got more coming. But uh -huh. let's talk a little bit about this how, from your experience um, and then we'll come back to Bryce. So what was it, tell us what this was like just kind of being thrown into the deep end uh starting with the laser cutter just what what was your experience as somebody never having done this for yourself before well um i have actually had experience with 3d printers but only talking about them because of my work with enable um yeah. my ex-husband was the one who did like the technical stuff and the 3d printing and the laser cutting at his work and i saw um things being made and I was curious about them, but I never really got to try them myself. Um, and so when I got the laser cutter, first of all, I was worried I was going to burn the house down. It's still here. <laughs> Almost of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just the, just the idea of having to unbox it and put it together and um, follow the directions and make sure that I got everything right and not do it, I was worried I was gonna do it wrong and then start it up and then break it. Um, hmm. And it had this big conundrum, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't hard. And I, it, it's been really cool through each product that I've tried to gain more confidence in myself. By the time I got to the form box, I was like, oh yeah, this is no problem. You know, with the, the laser cutter, it was a little more iffy because it's I mean it's a laser have you not seen real genius <laughs> um, maybe, maybe I'm old but um, lasers are cool yes <laughs> so, um, but the and then the ultimaker you know right out of the box I, I loved that it literally tells you what to do as you're going you know have you know do this and this this will happen and um and there's so much in the maker community online that you can YouTube and look up that it's forced me to stop asking my boss um, questions and go look online because somebody else has already dealt with it. Um, and I'm, I'm learning to gain confidence in myself in my own making ability. And now I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna go make this and it'll be good. And if it's not, somebody can help me. <laughs> yeah, and not only make stuff, but uh, this is the cool part that you've been able to just turn around now and teach it to somebody else being a, mm -hmm. having just learned it yourself. Uh, yeah. which I, I think is really, I mean, I haven't been involved in this at all, folks. I mean, this was just Jen learning this for herself and then, you know, a little pointer every now and then from me, but otherwise figuring things out as she went and then turning around and, and teaching Bryce all of this. I, I have not been involved in that at all. So this is really exciting for me to hear about. Um, so Bryce, I'd like to hear the same from you. Just what, what was it like sort of your first experience when you, I think it was the laser cutter that you got to look at first. So yeah, what, yeah, what was that like getting to see this thing for the first time? Oh my goodness. So when we were first burning, the, you know, the first few etches, I was, I was shocked. I was amazed, you know, I'm, yeah. I was freaking out. I was like, this, was, is, like, this is not a real thing, right? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he literally like clasped his hands and was like yeah. jumping, watching it burn his design. Oh, I know the feeling. I know. Yeah. It's so, and it's so cool to watch those things, especially the laser. It's so cool to watch them work, isn't it? It's just sort of hypnotic. Yeah. Were you, how, how did you do? Were you able to find a piece there that you had done by hand? Any of those around? <laughs> oh, yes. Actually, I did. I did. Um, yeah. So here's one I did by hand. I had to keep the design fairly simple, you know, to obviously do it by hand, right? So here's, get it up close a little bit, right? Just kind of some yeah. line work, you know. Yeah. I, I etched this in with a Dremel, actually. This is a 
piece of bone. I actually made this chain too, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> nice. okay. Anyway, yeah, thank you. It's uh, now, yeah. Do, very you, do you have anything similar, like a bone piece that you've done a laser etch on? Yes. Um, yeah, lots of them now. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe if you can hold those up side by side, yeah. I'm wondering oh, if we can sure. see a difference. Yeah. So here's. This is. Here you go. Yeah. Laser. Yeah. Versus Old by school. hand. Yeah, so for anybody that might be listening to the audio only version, we're just looking at two side by side bone pieces, one of which was etched by a laser and one was done by hand. And to me, the immediate difference is just the sharpness and the cleanness of the lines on the one on the left. That's on my left. That's the laser one. And and the other one, you, it, it looks hand done. I mean, I, it, it's, right. it's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. But wow, I mean, I, I can definitely see a clear quality difference with that laser etching. That's That's pretty impressive. Did you and, and talk to us about the like what what kind of time went into the one that you did by hand? Um, that one that you just held yeah. up there. But how long yeah. would that take? The one by hand would take. That definitely be a, a few hours. You know, it takes yeah. quite a bit of time. Um, but just to try and keep the keep the tool steady. You know, draw any kind of straight right. line is absolutely really a challenge. Absolutely. You know. And what is that tool that you're using when you do it by hand? Is it a, like a heated tool? Oh, no, I usually just use a like a little Dremel grinder. Okay, you know, so, so just with the abrasion. Okay, and yeah. Jen or Bryce, do you remember how long it took to etch the one that was done on the laser? Um, well, after like the design time really is where all the time goes with that. Um, True. The, the actual laser time on that was... 10 minutes something maybe less like yeah, and that's you just brought up a really great point that's what i think is exciting about this and i want to talk a little bit more about that so the design is where the time is and that's where it should be that's where your art is happening right that's where where you get to make you know your vision come to life but once you've done that what i think is so exciting is the ability to duplicate that design over and over and over again in a matter of minutes instead of having to carve it again and again. And so have yeah. you had an opportunity to play with that at all of taking one of your designs that was created, you know, as a vector art and then reproducing it a few times? Maybe there was a piece that somebody wanted to, to get copies of. Have, have you done any of that? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I've been, yeah, this I've been kind of doing a few that I've done over oh, and over. Nice. Excellent. Oh yeah, that's oh, a nice. little coffin skull, yeah. Oh, look at that, that's great. I've done that one in a couple different sizes now, you know, mm -hmm. just. Basically, just because I can. Yeah. So then, yeah. So you're still grinding the bone using just power tools or hand mm -hmm. tools, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put that piece into the laser cutter and you just do the etching on it, right? Basically, yeah. I actually, um, I take the bones, like the raw bones. I have to, after I clean them and everything, I have to kind of grind them flat so I have a surface to work with. Cut them, you know, and then I usually put them into the machine just kind of as a rectangle. And then I, once I etch it, then I go out. I read, I go and cut out the shape. Because I think trying to match the trying to match it would be really difficult, you know. Nice. Oh, that one's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and we will we'll share links along with the uh, recording of this video on our Facebook page. So for those of you who might not be watching right now, we'll make sure that you have the links where you can check out Bryce's work. Uh, but again, it's Carter Craft Work without the S uh, on uh, on Etsy, Facebook, or Instagram. And uh, some beautiful pieces being being held up for us right now. So. Um, as I mentioned, we've uh, we started with the laser cutter, uh, but then we also got the 3D printer involved, and now there's a desktop vacuum former. So I want to talk a little bit about each of these. I get the feeling from our, our discussion so far that the laser cutting is something that you're going to be able to do quite a lot with, Bryce, um, and maybe not quite as much with the others, but I'm still curious. Have you had a chance to play around with the 3D printing at all, and have you thought at all about how that might or might not play in with anything that you do? Is, does that have any relevance here? Um, a little bit, yeah. I've um, I haven't used it a whole lot yet. Uh, we're still kind of kind of waiting for Jen to know how exactly to do it to <laughs> simplify the information to me. Because sure, okay. once it's easy for her, then it's going to be something. Well, like okay, so that makes sense because Jen, we we're, we're kind of staggering things, right? So Jen learned right. first the laser cutter and then three D printer, and now you're learning the vacuum former. And and so uh, while while you're learning the laser cutter now, Bryce, Jen is mastering the three D printer, and then you'll follow behind. So right. so then let's talk about you a little bit, Jen, and the 3D printer, because you've been using that a lot for your, your, your van customization project, right? Right. So what are some of the things that you've done and some of the things that you're thinking you might want to do with, with that? Um, I think the first 3D printed thing I made for my van was um, back of the seat hooks. Um, I had been looking for like a, an organizer for the back of my seat to store stuff. And mm -hmm. I hate 
flutters. So everything that I was finding had like pockets and stuff. So I found a design on Thingiverse that was already made and um, 3D printed it and they just kind of hook on the back where the headrest comes up so I could hang bags and hide my stuff. Yes. Um, and then I used the high temp um, plastic for that so that they don't droop in the heat, even though it what, it's, smart. it's hot right. maybe twice a year yeah. on Tuesday <laughs> when you Excellent. can't even go outside and off of work. Yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely uh, good idea. Yeah. So this so. is this is a great um, example of you know a lot of people do this. You get a three D printer, and a great way to get started is Thingiverse or some of the other sites out there. Thingiverse is by far the most popular one, but there are others as well where you can download all these free objects that others have created. There are almost, I mean, practically countless things. So pretty much anything you search for, you will find. And it's a great way to get started. Something that you need for around the house, or in this case, around the car, um, and print it out and, you, and it works and you get this great sense of satisfaction. From there, usually the next step is the, the idea of actually creating something for yourself. And you've been playing around with that a little bit too now. So what, yeah. what, what have you done? Or are you thinking of doing with that? That's a little bit something a little bit more custom then? Um, I want to make myself a mask holder for the front, but I want it to be cool and not just, you know, a, a hook or something. Nice. Um, I did a, we did a laser cut shelf um, for the back where the, where the cup holders are and stuff in the back, but I need to um, make something so that it doesn't slide off and it will go it will connect to the bottom of the shelf and stick into the cup holder so it doesn't slide around while I'm driving. So I need to design uh -huh. that. Um, you know what? I have some antibacterial 3D printing filament here that I could send you and you can print it in that and it'll give you some extra uh, protection properties for that holder. Yes, that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> one, okay. And then we've been work we worked on a custom shelf for the back of your van, right? Now that was an interesting one because we did the shelf itself with a laser cutter, cut out mm -hmm. a custom shape to match a shelf right. in the back of your van, then you etched a design. But now we're going to be using the 3D printer to to make the parts for the bottom that sit into the cavities on, right. the, on the van shelf, right? So yeah. that's an interesting one where you're kind of combining the laser cutting and the 3D printing. That'll be fun to see that right. one come together. I need to make um, some hooks or some clips or something for photos um, along the top edge around the, the windows and stuff. There's like a section where the plastic meets the fabric and you can kind of shove stuff down there. So I mm -hmm. want to make a, a hook that kind of shoves in there and then comes out so I can hang stuff up. Um, you only get so a we... couple of the that's one of the things that you and I talked about sort of earlier on in this process. I think it was when you were doing that first project with the hooks, uh, Jen, that we talked about, well, you know, I could just go and buy hooks on Amazon or something. Mm -hmm. And and you could, in fact, now what did you found that you could, in fact, buy some hooks for, I don't remember what it was, probably five, it's for the five seat dollars. Back. Yeah, I, I, I could have gone on Amazon and got the seat back hooks for like four dollars for the pair. But then okay. you have, you're, you're paying for the shipping, you get, and, and I don't know if anybody else gets this, but you order a tiny little thing from Amazon and you get a box. And it comes in a box, in. yeah. <laughs> um, so, That's right. You know, it, it was easier to just, I think it cost me, what, a buck and a half in plastic. That, yeah. And then Especially I told it you get a to make them. <laughs> I went to bed and I woke up and they were there and I didn't have to, you know, deal with an Amazon driver and packaging and recycling and the gas it would take to get it here. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I know, look, 3D printers aren't in every home yet, and maybe they maybe they will, maybe they won't be. But it is interesting that there are these use cases that you might not think about. Well, sure, you could get it online, but you, you, you got to think about the environmental impact, you know, all that shipping and the pollution that's putting into the air and the shipping materials that may or may not end up getting recycled and the just the, the time and the energy that, that goes into that, as opposed to making it this idea of producing things 
on demand where they're needed when they're needed that's what kind of gets me excited about 3d printing and and so you've been sort of experiencing that and i think the other side of it that you're seeing for yourself is the customization side you know yeah you could go buy some Mm -hmm. hooks but maybe you can't get exactly the shape and the size hooks that you want for that one little space at the top of your van you know being able to customize something exactly for your space i think is another key benefit Mm -hmm. and i i just this last week or just yesterday um, used the 3D printer to make um, my own soap with the form box. So um, we have my traveling dork logo now in a disc form that I put on the form box and then made the mold. And then yesterday I made the soap. So I have my very own traveling dork soap. And if I forget it in the campground showers and somebody steals it, I will know. (laughs) Awesome. I love it. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, check that video out on our YouTube channel. It's a, it's a blast. And uh, so that's a, a good lead into the vacuum former. So you're, you know, vacuum formers, you don't need the 3D printer to go with it. You happen to have one. So that was interesting that you were able to print something on your 3D printer, use that as a, a form then in your vacuum former to make soaps. Um, but you, you could do that in other ways too. And you're going to be showing that in some upcoming videos, right? So tell us about some right. of the other things you're doing with the vacuum former, things that you have planned for the vacuum former next. Um, my grandpa passed away in February, so, and he was um, a fisherman. He loved fly fishing, so, and he's got, like, 23 great-grandkids, and, like, eight oh great-great-grandkids, and 10 grandkids, and, um, you know, everybody wants something, so I found his old fly tying box with all of his um, flies in it, and I decided maybe I would make a heart shape with the laser cutter. I glued two pieces of um, MDF together to make the heart shape thick enough and then poured resin into the mold I made on the vacuum former, put a fly in it, um, and now I'm making um, wind chimes with Mm. individual um, fly in it so that everybody can have one. So that's my current project. (laughs) <laughs> I like it. Very sweet. Yeah. Um, and it's, again, the kind of coming back to that customization thing. Here's, here's a case where you're making something, you know, really personal. Um, obviously, it's not the kind of thing you're going to find in a store. That's, that's yeah. where these kinds of tools are, are nice to have around. Um, so, Bryce, I know, like I said, the focus has been on the laser cutter, um, but let's brainstorm a little bit here. Now that you have a, you've got this 3D printer around, um, that may or may not come in. I'm kind of thinking like how that might come in. And that I, I, I would see that being less likely to factor into your work. But the vacuum former, that strikes me as having some interesting possibilities. Have you guys mm-hmm. talked about this at all? Where, I mean, I could see even some of the shapes that you make. I know you typically work in bone and things like that, but have you thought about maybe duplicating some of those pieces and other materials using the forming technique or anything like that? Uh, yes, actually we've been uh, talking about that quite a bit lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking, um, yeah, if I could make some even larger larger versions of some of these shapes, they can go for like wall hangings, they can go for, you know, sure. really whatever, you know, like depending on the material, let's say I make it out of resin, I could add some colors exactly. to that maybe or. Uh, oh yeah, you can add the decorative items, kind of like what Jen is doing with putting the feathers and the hook inside. That's a great idea. Or, hey, I mean, who doesn't need Thor's hammer soaps, right? I mean, there's lots of possibilities <laughs> yeah. here. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's I right. A lot of things. Okay. You know? So yeah, so it, uh, going back to kind of something that I had mentioned earlier on in the episode, um, what I one of the things that I find fascinating about the digital fabrication technologies is the ability to it, 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 the, the kind of the duplication side of it, right? The ability to take something that is truly artistic, that is creative, that is still yours but then to be able to multiply it and recreate it and reproduce it in a much more efficient manner. And this kind of leads into maybe building a more profitable business, which I want to talk a bit about. So tell me how you feel about that, Bryce, as an artist, you've been doing something by hand for years. And and I know I I do a little bit of that, not commercially, but as a hobbyist myself, I know there's a special kind of a satisfaction that comes from doing things by hand. How do you maintain a balance where you still feel like you are 
still involved in your craft. You're still producing your art and that the tools aren't taking anything away from that um, and yet take advantage of the benefits of the tools. How, how do you maintain that balance in your work? Well, for me, I like um, basically look at it as just an, another tool, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. I was using a Dremel before, I'm using this tool now. And I think right, also yeah. um, it kind of gave me a lot more freedom just to um, expand on like the art side of it as far as um, design. Like before I had to think, what am I going to be able to physically uh, create, you know, with the tools I have, you know, I was limited by, you know, the, yeah. the size of the bit or, you know, how thick the actual uh, Dremel tool is on its own. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm going to hold, you know, am I holding it like this wide thing I'm trying or am I, you know, I'm losing precision that way. So now I can pretty much, it's pretty much anything I can draw at this point, you know, I yeah. just gotta, it's what really freed up a lot of the, um, like obstacles I was facing, you know, as far as that goes. So I, I like it. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it almost strikes me that it kind of um, separates things out where you can create a, a piece of artwork, just sort of whether it be, I don't know what you're, what are you using for doing this stuff digitally now? Are you, are you doing things like a vector design program or something like that? Is that how you're getting some of these um, designs? You know, I'm still not great with the vectors, but I am, uh, I am utilizing the iPad. I've got mm -hmm. some drawing, I do, I use Procreate a lot. Oh, yeah. excellent. Okay. So you draw yeah. things out, whether even by hand, but the point is mm -hmm. so you can draw things out now and then you can figure out what do you want to put it on? Maybe yeah. I put this on bone or maybe I put this over on this, you know, make a soap from it or maybe, you know, so that I find kind of cool that you can almost separate these out and just focus on your art and then kind of explore different things you can do with that same bit of artwork using these different tools. That sounds, seems like a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah it, it, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of freedom, you know, I mean, before it was a lot of um, like, for example, I couldn't make anything too small because I'd yeah. be limited by, you know, how small can I work yeah. or um, like, you this know, one would have been really, 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 really hard to do. Oh yeah. 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 yeah that's very a small intricate. one. You know? Yeah. Very intricate line art there. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Okay. Yeah. I like, um, you know, doing oh, like, um, those putting, are beautiful. Thank you. Putting yeah. some artwork on like leather, you know, doing leather patches and things. Yeah. And that's, that's really so cool. Hard. That, you know, that would have been really difficult before I do traditional leather tooling also. And it takes forever. I mean, it's fun oh, and yeah. it looks cool, but the time that goes into it's insane, you know? <laughs> and have you had a chance to do any of that? Have you done any leather on the laser cutter yet? Yes. Um, I've done quite a bit actually yeah. <laughs> oh, nice yeah yes. let's uh I'll show you a couple here so I mean a lot of these um I you know I draw some design I'll use it on several products you know but like here's a here's a hat you know I'll put a leather patch on there uh very nice okay so, and he's, so you're... Able, he's been able to take the design for this and put it on a hat nice in yeah matter, you're using the same of, artwork there yep, yeah same artwork yeah and, so it's so easy because you can just you just set it up you know you say you know you take your picture and you're like okay i'm using a laser engraver we're gonna set the height on that and uh the power and the speed and you just throw it in there and go and there's and you no just scale it and yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And for those you know for the folks watching i mean i i don't you know i don't know how familiar you are with the laser cutters but these days, most of the kind of the mainstream and certainly the ones that we offer, they have a, a camera capture feature. So you can actually just put your, your piece in the laser cutter, the camera will take an image of that. And so in your software, you're actually seeing the piece of material and you can lay your artwork right out where you want it, you know, visually, you can just drag it right where you want it on top of that image and it'll put it right where it needs to go. So it just, it makes the process so much easier when you have that that kind of functionality. So you're able to use that, it looks like on some of these pieces. Yeah, he's oh, got absolutely. a couple of different designs here. Oh yeah. <laughs> this one. Oh, nice, look at that, yeah. So did you use the laser to cut that leather as well as etch it? Um, this, I actually had to cut by hand. Um, okay. The reason is I'm using an iPad and for some reason, the particular software that we have is not letting me cut. It's not the vector, yeah, okay, yeah. that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense, yeah, you'll, that'll be phase two, you'll get into the yeah. vector design for, for cutting <laughs> designs, that's excellent. Yeah. And um, so what, what else do you, um, it, like what are some of the other kinds of things? We've talked about some of the bone 
uh, carving pieces. You talked about leather work. Are there other materials you're exploring or working with or, or planning to get into as part of this? Um, I'm using also, I mean, also wood, of course, but sure, okay. uh, uh, some metal too. Um, I, I do a little bit of knife making as well. I want to do some etching on the blades. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Oh, yes. Okay. You know? um, I'm still kind of playing around with um, figuring out the right settings though to etch it deep enough into the metal. You know what I mean? If yeah, you do it, if, yeah, if you do it on yeah. too light of a setting or too fast of a speed, it kind of just like burns the surface and uh, it can kind of be removed, you know? Exactly. It can rub off. Yeah. 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 So you guys are using, you have kind of a, one of those marking sprays, right? For the metals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that it should, if you get the right settings, that should make a permanent marking on the metal. But if you want to actually engrave metal, then you would need to go to like a fiber laser. Those are a lot more expensive. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, the marking spray should should be effective if you find the right settings. The, the trick with things like knives, I would think, is going to be getting it on the kind of a, a, a level feel focal plane you know because the blade has to be you know because it's going to tend to be slanted so you'll have to prop it so that it's perfectly flat you know where you're where you're engraving oh, yeah. so but that sounds like a fun thing to play with too yeah oh, for sure we're hoping to figure out how to do how to get a like um what are they called drinking horns he does drinking oh, horns yeah, like <laughs> yeah giant do. Drinking oh okay horns. <laughs> and maybe some mugs at some point where mm, we could nice use a rotary machine or, or something is that a rotary yeah yeah okay all right <laughs> um but he you know now that covid is kind of allowing for festivals and stuff um last year he wasn't able to do any festivals but this year i mean if we had if we had the ability to make mugs and stuff like that quickly, mm -hmm. um, that would be something cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So producing something even custom for a particular event, potentially. Oh, sure. yeah. Wedding, like, yeah. besides, besides doing, um, you know, his own art, I would, I'm, I'm going to surprise him right now, but I would love to see him get to a point where, you know, people are coming to him on Etsy and being like, I saw your design for this hat. Would you make 25 of that design customized with the, my wedding date for my guests or, you know, um, you know, my bridal party needs this or that um, or, you know, because he's, he, he's, he's not just using these tools for art he's finding and then making stuff all of his art is original, um, you know, and he's got ideas for s the bottoms of skateboards and, you know, <laughs> he's, he's been a punk his whole life. So um, he's got skulls and <laughs> things yeah. and, you know, like, there's so many things that he could make and oh, sell yeah. and um, do custom work with, with, you know, with laser cutting, you just, you have the design and then you just swap out the name or the date oh, yeah. or, or right. something like that so there's a lot of stuff that that you could be doing yeah true <laughs> that's right that's right and that's going back to the beginning i mean the reason i was you know so excited to be able to share this story with with our audience and and the reason i want to follow up with you guys and hear more about this a little bit down the road you know i I've always said that I, I, the reason I get excited about digital fabrication is because of the possibilities that it opens up because of what it allows people to do. And I, I really sincerely believe that everybody should have the opportunity to get paid for what they love. I, I it's, it's, you know, unfortunate that you find yourself in a situation, Bryce, where this is kind of being pushed upon you. Um, but whether that's the case or not, you know, I, I see people all the time in, you know, having this this opportunity to to take something that's a passion something that they really love doing and by using digital fabrication actually start to turn it into something where they can make money turn it into a small business that then becomes a not so small business sometimes <laughs> and um and and turn it into a, a a career you know and it's there's in my mind there's just nothing better when somebody can start something for themselves something that's your own you know this is a business that you're going to build for yourself something that's sustainable and something that you get to wake up every morning and do what you love to do 
I, you know, what's better than that? That's just so exciting to me. So I, I really, really wish you the best of luck with with this. And I, I know Jen will be there to help you. Um, and, and along the way, you know, Jen, I know you're going to continue learning all kinds of new tricks and everything. And part mm -hmm. of the way you're doing that is through, we mentioned this in the intro, you're, you've got this little side um, sort of adventure going on called the Traveling mm -hmm. Dork. Tell us a little bit more about the Traveling Dork. What is the Traveling Dork? <laughs> traveling Dork is me. <laughs> um, I... Uh, last year, when I wasn't able to travel because of COVID, um, I had Bryce help me um, make a platform in the back of my tiny little Kia Forte so that I could, <laughs> thankfully, I'm only 5'4", and I was able to like lay down in the back with my head squished against the passenger seat, but he helped me make a platform so that I could have my pillow on it. Um, and then I realized I didn't really want to spend a lot of time in a basically capsule <laughs> so i um i traded in my kia for a dodge grand caravan and now i have a full-size space to sleep with space to move around and i'm kind of making it my own little fort on wheels i guess uh, <laughs> and as um as so as a woman who has been kind of mentally told myself my whole life that you can't do this you can't do that you can't build this you can't do that having this project as my own and forcing myself to problem solve like I had to um, figure out how to level the back of my floor and I was looking at all these YouTube videos of you know get a chop saw and you have to make two by fours and screws and drills and whatever and I'm like how about I just go to Office Max and get six giant cardboard boxes and duct tape them together? <laughs> so that's what I did. My floor is flat. Nice. So um, it's been Creative. cool to, yeah, and I, I'm documenting it on YouTube because I want other women who aren't very good at building stuff or are intimidated by power tools or whatever to see me doing the stuff and then get their own ideas for how they can do it their way, not just, you know, watching a man do it or, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, I don't, I haven't seen anybody else who's duct tape a whole bunch of boxes together <laughs> to level their floor. Um, so, but it's been cool to, to do that and then figure out how to lay it out myself and then, you know, just decorate it how I want to decorate it and um, go on adventures. And, you know, my kids are out of the house. I, I, you know, I have a home base here where I can come back to. Um, and yeah, I'm just going out and traveling around and taking pictures of nice. everything. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Sounds like a lot of fun. So we'll be following your adventures. And so we'll have some of that, your projects and everything. We'll continue to share through our 3D Universe YouTube channel, but check out Traveling Dork as well on, on YouTube to follow the full <laughs> adventures. So um, you, you kind of mentioned this, Jen, but I, I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the upcoming possibilities here. So we've uh, you know sent you the laser cutter, we've got you a 3D printer, we've got you a desktop vacuum former. Now what's next? So we've talked about getting you maybe a, a slightly larger laser cutter and uh, that one's going to have a rotary tool. So that yes. seems like that could be a lot of fun. What Have you guys talked about this at all? Like what kinds of things could you do with a rotary tool for, for Bryce's, for the kind of stuff that Bryce does? Have you guys brainstormed about that at all? What you might do with that? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, you, little know, bit. you know, mugs yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the, oh yeah, okay. The, the Viking and Norse and like, um, what is that called? Is it Wiccan? No, Wiccan rituals, kind of okay. that kind of stuff. You know, like he, he's made, uh, he makes runes and mm -hmm. I'm not well versed in their, the Norse <laughs> religion. So I don't really know what to call it properly, sure. but um, you know, candle holders and, and things that they use for solstice yeah. celebrations yeah. or offerings and stuff like that. So I think that would, really open oh, yeah. up a oh, yeah. lot for what cool. he could sell yeah it'd yeah. be really cool and those those cups that you mentioned you're talking about basically like a, a hollowed out sort of it's like an antler right basically and yeah it's and like a like a bullhorn yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah that and yeah, uh that. 
Like she that was mentioning, well, yeah. Like, um, yeah, right. I, I think it'd be really cool, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've never tried that, but I would think that that would etch very cleanly that material because it's probably similar. I would think it would be similar to bone. It is essentially a bone-like material, right? It's similar. Um, the horn, the, the exterior of the horn is actually uh, keratin. So oh, okay. It's, it's a bit like uh, what your fingernails made out of. Ah, so much thicker, okay. of course. Thank you. Sure. Um, but anyhow, yeah, there's that. Um, I was going to do like uh, offering bowls too. If there was a rotary feature, that'd be nice. I could etch something on the outside of a wooden bowl, you know, like some oh, knock yes. or some along that line, you know. Yes, yes, very um, nice. Jen just handed me a horn that I, I actually, I did this one by, by hand as far as the engraving. And it was okay. just, uh, you know, it was the first horn I did. It's not like too amazing, but I thought it came out okay. All right, this is a drinking horn. It's a hollowed out bull's horn. Oh, yeah. This, uh, I filled, the, I uh, coat the inside with beeswax. It's a very traditional method. Um, a lot of people will use uh, various like two-part epoxies, which they do work really well and they hold up a lot better in the heat. But in my opinion, that epoxy has a bit of a smell. And when you're drinking out of it, you can smell it. And I feel like I just taste that epoxy, you know, and I don't really like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and it just occurs to me, this might be one example of where the 3D printing might come into play, because I'm looking at that shape. You know, when you use a rotary tool on a laser engraver, because it's it's, it's essentially something that's sitting on a couple of, of wheels and it's it's okay. rotating it kind of like those, you know, those little hot dog warmers that you see in the gas station, kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, so you need your object to be essentially cylindrical so that it'll rotate okay. smoothly. So I could, for something like that, I could see 3D printing some kind of, you know, holders that go on each end that so that it can rotate smoothly with, oh. with the horn in the middle. Uh, we'd have to, we'll have to do some experimenting, but I could see that maybe as being a way of getting that in there. We'd have to see if even the diameter is going to be uh, within the, within the limits of the machine. But yeah, that there sounds I, like there's some cool possibilities there. That yeah. is a, an amazing idea to try and 3D print something to hold it. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Because you could you could print it exactly the size you need with exactly the size opening for the, the horn to fit in there. So that, that mm -hmm. might be one way of doing it. And that's that's cool because each horn is absolutely different. Yeah. So you would have to make exactly. one customized specifically for each horn. Mm -hmm. Sure. No problem. You just have to sell them for a lot then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah, this is I mean, this is really exciting. So then you're 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 um, sort of wrapping up the the current full time position uh, early next mm -hmm. month, right? Yep. And is that your is your plan to be able to start kind of for, focus full time and and kind of building this and doing more of of your your craft work? Um, it is actually. I um, I also have to you know go through the process of looking for another job and. I'm hoping to get some retraining and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely, my big focus is to uh, build this business. I mean, that's my dream, really. It's like you were saying, I mean, just to have something that is yours and that you care about and you wake up and do every day. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You know, that yeah. would be. Well, we'll be doing everything we can to help you promote this. We want to see you be successful. I know Jen does, and she's going to be obviously there and, and learning right along with you. So uh, you'll, you'll have our support and uh, I, I've no doubt that you're going to do well. I, I would love nothing more than to hear back from you that you just, you're, you're just buried and can't keep up with demand and you've got to <laughs> figure out how to scale up and that, that'll be a, a great, great problem to hear about. Oh man. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So uh, for anybody that is watching or listening and they want to go and learn more, let's start with you, Bryce. So they can find you on Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy under Carter Craft Work. No S, yep. all one That's word, right. right? That's correct. So on, on any of those platforms, just look for Carter Craft Work. And uh, to follow uh, Jen's adventures, look for The Traveling Dork on YouTube and uh, follow our own 3D Universe YouTube channel and you'll yeah. see her projects there as well. I have I have my um, personal Instagram, which is Ninja Mom Jen Owen. And then I've also been taking 3D printed Bernie around on my adventure. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, you can find those photos under Road Trippin' with Bernie. Um, <laughs> Road Trippin' with Instagram. Bernie, okay. Yeah, so. Nice. He's, uh, he's not really following the rules of the seasons, though. He's still wearing his coat and mittens and his mask, <laughs> and it's warm outside, so. 
Yes, we might need to 3D print another Bernie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Swim yeah, I mean, Bernie, Bernie without that. mittens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, guys, this has been so much fun. I've really enjoyed hearing about the work that you're doing and the work that you plan on doing. I definitely want to do a follow-up session. I'm sure that our uh, audience would love to hear too about the other uh, cool projects that you guys come up with from here on out. So let's definitely plan on, on getting back together in, in the months to come and, and, uh, and hear more. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. As always, I want to invite uh, our audience to reach out with any kind of comments uh, and questions. Uh, on, uh, you can always comment on our Facebook page. You can email us info at 3duniverse.org. Just make sure to use .org for our email. You can also find us at our blog, 3duniverse.org. And uh, you can find the 3D Universe Untethered series directly now at 3duniverseuntethered.com. So we have kind of a direct uh, page set up for this series now. So please uh, stay in touch. Let us know if you have any questions or would like to know more about the projects and the things that we talked about today. And uh, stay tuned so that you can join us again next time to hear more about the projects that Jen and Bryce have been up to. Thanks, guys, for joining, and thanks, everyone, for watching. See you next time. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.